right, so we have an electrochemical cell here, and let's see what's going on in this thing. This is a platinum electrode, so those don't do anything. There is inert as graphite, maybe even more so. But we have chlorine, cadmium, and water, I suppose, that might react in some way. If we go to our redox table, and go down the left side and up the right side, uh, chlorine is our strongest oxidizer. I'll try to do this fast since you're good at it by now, probably. If we go up the right side, uh, it's probably cadmium metal. Yeah. Cadmium is our strongest reducer. So the two reactions happening here are chlorine is getting reduced. It's picking up electrons and turning into chlorides. And on the other side, cadmium metal is oxidizing to cadmium-2 and releasing re electrons as it goes. They're asking for two mass changes, which means we get to do our it's funny calculation twice. Or, actually we don't have to do that part twice, we just have to do the part after that twice, sorry. Here is our trusty formula. It is funny. And what goes into this is we have a current of 1.93 amps. 1.93. The time is 2 hours, which is 7,200 seconds. The Faraday constant is the same thing it was yesterday. And then we have our unknown number of electrons. So if we solve this for NE, we do 1.93 times 7200 divided by 96,500. And we get 0 0.144 moles of electrons. Now those electrons do two things. Those electrons are being added to the chlorine, so they're reducing it. And those same electrons are being sucked out of the cadmium to oxidize it, so it's the same number of electrons on both sides. We can use those electrons to find how much chlorine we're losing. If we say, however many electrons you transfer, you're getting half that much chlorine. The ratio is 2 to 1. So if we take this number of electrons and divide it by 2, we get that the number of moles of chlorine is 0. 0.072, that's moles of chlorine, and from that we can get a mass. The mass of chlorine is its number of moles times its molar mass, 0 0.072 moles times uh, 70.90 is the molar mass for chlorine. calculator is punched and we get a mass of 5.10 grams of chlorine. Happening at the same time, we have cadmium getting oxidized. Going from this same number of electrons, we can look at our cadmium reaction and, well, it tells us the same thing the chlorine did. It says for every two moles of electrons that you have, you get one mole of before we were saying chlorine, now we're saying cadmium. So again, you take the number of moles of electrons and divide by 2, and you get 0 0.072 moles of cadmium. We find the mass the same way. It's number of moles times molar mass. The molar mass for cadmium is 112 point, what is it, 41. So 0 0.072 times 112.41, I get 8.09 moles. I'm sorry, not moles, 8.09 grams of cadmium metal. Now, uh, apparently from the key here, they wanted us to say which one's happening at each electrode, which isn't totally clear from the question, but whatever. It's easy enough to do. This reaction is chlorine going from 0 to minus 1, that is a reduction. Reduction has a C in it, so it happens at, starts with C, cathode. 
the chlorine reaction that happens at the cathode. So there we are going to use up 5.1 grams of chlorine and produce chloride ions at the same time. Over on the other side, which by elimination is the anode, where oxidation happens, we will have 8.09 grams of cadmium dissolving into solution. It'll start out as solid. The solid electrode will start to crumble and fall apart as it dissociates into ions and floats away. Okay. Now this one, the way they describe this is pretty wild. I'm going to sketch it and try to explain my way through it. It's a lot going on. But the chemistry is not all that hard. It's just they make you go through a lot of words to get to it. So we have a big container. And in this container, we put the lead head of a gavel. So we have a block of lead. And it's wired up to the negative terminal of a power supply. So up here is a power supply. This is its negative end. And this is its positive end. The short line on a battery diagram like this is always the negative end. And a long line is always the positive end. So look for that, and you can always figure it out. So we have a positive end over here doing something. The negative end of a power supply means that it's full of electrons. It's full of electrons. If you touch a wire to it, it'll fill that wire up with electrons, and it'll start pumping electrons into it. So the fact that we have a power supply hooked up to the negative terminal like this means electrons will flow this way down into the lead. Now that means whatever's down here will be gaining electrons, and Leo says gaining electrons is reduction. So our reduction, sorry, to keep that in the frame so you can see it, our reduction has to happen over on this side because that's how they hooked up the power supply, and that means this side has to be the cathode because cathode starts with C, and there's a C in reduction. So there's going to be some kind of reduction reaction going on over here on or around the lead. Uh, they said this is a nickel nitrate solution, so it contains nickel 2, it contains nitrates, and there's an anode made of nickel over on the other end. The positive end of the power supply means if it's positive it sucks in electrons. So electrons flow up out of the solution and into the positive side, and it'll keep sucking in electrons as long as the power supply is on. That means whatever's over here must be losing electrons. And according to Leo Sesgur, losing electrons is oxidation. So this side must be our anode. So instead of looking at the redox table to figure out what our oxidizer and reducer are, we're just saying this power supply is going to decide for us what the oxidizer and reducer are. Over on this side, if we're losing electrons, I believe that means we're going to have to have nickel oxidizing. Nickel metal, because its electrons are being stripped away, is going to turn into nickel 2 and release two electrons because they're being pulled out of it and into the power supply. And over here, if electrons are being piped in, if the lead goes negatively charged because it's all full of electrons, that's going to be very interesting to these nickel ions. Nickel is going to float over here and pick up those electrons. So I believe what's going to happen here is we'll get nickel 2 plus 2 electrons converting to nickel metal. We will get nickel plating onto our chunk of lead. And we'll end up with a nickel plated gavel. So that's the chemistry that's going on. Now let's see what numbers they've actually given us. They said the circuit's completed with an anode made of nickel metal. Yeah, we got that attached to the positive terminal, lowered into the solution. What will be the final mass of the gavel head if a current of 5 amps flows for 10 hours? So nickel is plating onto this. It's going to get heavier. It's going to start at 500 grams, and it'll be more than that after because of all the nickel that's been added on. How much? Well, let's see if It Is Funny can help us with this. The current is 5 amps. 
The time is 10 hours, which is 36,000 seconds. The Faraday constant is 96,500. And then we have a number of moles of electrons, which we don't know yet. So 5 times 36,000 divided by 96,500 will get us... The number of moles of electrons is 1.8653. That's probably enough. Moles of electrons. Our reaction tells us however many electrons are transferred through this, you're going to get half that much nickel. The ratio is 2 to 1. So if we take our moles of electrons and divide it by 2, that gets us the number of moles of nickel is 0 0.93264. That's moles of nickel. But we don't want moles of nickel, we want a mass. Mass is number of moles times molar mass. The number of moles, we just found it, it's 0 0.93264 still sitting in my calculator. And the molar mass for nickel is 5869. Multiply that by 58.69 and we get 54, what am I doing for significant digits here? All these have three so my answer should have three sig digs. 54.7 grams of nickel. So this gavel head used to be 500 grams of lead. Now it's picked up 54.7 grams of nickel. It is now a 554.7 gram gavel head of nickel-plated lead.